approximately 13 years ago, Satoshi, the anonymous creator of Bitcoin, vanished. Vanished without a trace. And for 13 years, nobody could actually figure out who Satoshi is. Well, guess what? HBO did all kinds of meticulous research. They left no stone unturned, no door unopened. And finally, the HBO special, Money Electric, was released, which revealed who Satoshi was. Or was it just a giant marketing pitch? Welcome back, everyone. That's right. The storm, Milton, has not washed me away just yet. It's just barely kind of raining uh, right now. And, you know, for the just for point of reference, this is recorded on October 9th. So the storm hasn't really hit here yet. So that means you guys get another vid. And of course, today we are going to talk about the HBO documentary Money Electric and the assertion as to who they chose as Satoshi. And I'm just going to start off by saying it was extremely disappointing, the conclusion that they came to. But also at the same time, I can respect the troll. I can respect the troll. So the first thing I wanted to discuss was essentially the beginning of the documentary. Now, this documentary was supposed to, uh, seemed to be a documentary that was going to do research or, or provide some type of in-depth uh, research, and I guess that's maybe just my assumption, uh, about who Satoshi is. But um, within the first 10, 15 minutes of it, you genuinely feel like you're just watching um, an ad, really, uh, an ad for Bitcoin. Um, something that I was kind of disappointed and confused by was the mention of El Salvador and Prospera, I think it is. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. <laughs> um, so that, that's more of a Samson Mao story, right? That, that's more about him. Like, El Salvador has nothing to do with Satoshi. El Salvador has really nothing to do with the inception of Bitcoin. So why it was mentioned, especially at the beginning, I can only assume is for marketing purposes. That's that's really all there is to it. And I can say that when I saw that, that immediately set the tone for the whole entire documentary for me. I mean, I at that moment, I, I knew that, okay, well, this is it's just a marketing pitch. And, and that's it. And I do think that to a certain extent, and people will, I'm sure, disagree with me, I, I think that that did a disservice. I really think that we would have been much better served by a proper documentary of analyzing different people, the different people that were involved earlier on in the space. And of course, people are going to argue, well, of course, they took a look at Adam back and they also mentioned Peter Todd. It's like, yeah, there were many other people that were involved even prior to Bitcoin, Right. Uh, they didn't go into any kind of uh, depth about the cypherpunk mailing list. It just it just seemed like it was a marketing piece. OK, that's that's the way I see it, that it was a marketing piece. Um, but look, my opinion is not the truth. OK, it's not like this is what it is. Let's take a look at what some other Bitcoiners said about this documentary that essentially made the claim that Peter Todd is Satoshi. Arthur Van Pelt. For the people who don't know who Arthur Van Pelt is, he has been documenting the fake Toshi saga, right? Fake Toshi being Craig Wright. And we all know most recently it was ruled by a court that fake Toshi is indeed not Satoshi. So anyways, let's see what Arthur had to say. HBO documentary filmmaker Cullen Hoback has named Peter Todd, a Bitcoin core developer who has been involved with Bitcoin since 2010, as who he believes to be the real world identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. Sai, told you so. What an effing nothing burger. And yeah, I, I do agree with that. I, I do agree that it's a nothing burger. Let's continue on. Hoddle and not. Hoddle and not. For the people who don't know who Hoddle and not is, I don't see how you wouldn't. Um, but essentially, he is also known as the Space Cat. And he was essentially the first, uh, or I should say, the primary victim 
of fake Toshi Craig Wright. Craig Wright attempted to sue Hoddle and not for defamation and uh, essentially just made the, the last four years of, of this uh, this person's, the Space Cat's life. Att he attempted to make it a living hell, um, but Space, uh, Space Cat has prevailed. And what did Space Cat have to say? HBO, half-baked opinions. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with this. I, I am going to agree with this. All right, let's see what else people had to say. One of my favorite accounts, Pleditor, Here's what he had to say. Just finished watching HBO Satoshi documentary. That was one of the least compelling Satoshi Nakamoto identities I've ever seen. I'm going to agree with that. Early on in the documentary, around 11 minutes in, the narrator suggests that the identity of Satoshi should not be known because it could endanger his safety. Then ironically, he proceeds to recklessly accuse Peter Todd of being Satoshi Nakamoto without actually having proof. They interviewed Peter Todd and Peter was trolling Cullen the whole time. At one point, Peter says, I suspect a lot of them, Bitcoiners, will be very happy if you go this route, referring to Cullen accusing Peter of being Satoshi because it's going to be yet another example of journalists really missing the point in a way that's very funny. Peter was right. This documentary is garbage and shameful. And guys, all of the links to all of these tweets are going to be in the show notes. I think Pleditor hit the nail on the head. And um, I, I do agree with, with Peter Todd uh, in this. Um, he gets it, right? He knows it. And it also begs the, it, it also begs the question, right? Was Peter Todd and Adam Back trolling the producer, right? I, I don't see why not. I, I, I really don't. There's no benefit to them to being Satoshi, either one of them. Either one of them. And it would seem that during the um, dur during the discussion, during the documentary, I should say, Peter Todd a few times said to him, oh, no, I am Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's like when he says it, you're, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I know you're not, but you're saying you are. And is that part of the trick? So definitely, definitely some uh, some 5D chess going on there. Here is a video excerpt from the HBO documentary. Let's take a look at it. And I mean, look, you, in my eyes, the body language is obvious, okay? I, I genuinely agree that this is most likely a troll on, on Peter and uh, Adam's part. But hey, you guys, you guys decide what you think. Here we go. A concept which you had envisioned years earlier, but you needed some kind of cover in order to make. <laughs> And you also needed some cover for that 2010 post. <laughs> yeah, because I was Satoshi. I mean, yeah, you know, you're very concerned about all the privacy stuff. Uh, so you reach out to your old buddy Adam back. You say, we need to do something about this, but we need to pay the devs. But you can't join Blockstream because it would look too uh, suspicious. So you don't. I will admit you're pretty creative. You come up with some crazy theories. It's ludicrous, but it's the sort of theory someone who spends their time as a documentary journalist would come up with. So yeah, yeah, I'll say of course I'm Satoshi and I'm Craig Wright. And yes, I was definitely covering that little bit about, you know, fees to go pretend to be Satoshi or not Satoshi, one or the other. Well, why make up the whole John Dillon thing? Well, like I said, I'm not John Dillon. Okay. Sorry, I'm not John Dillon. I don't know who that is. I'll warn you, this is going to be very funny when you put this into the documentary and a bunch of Bitcoiners watch it. I well, think, the, I don't think they would be very happy with this conclusion because it's pretty <laughs> controversial within the community at this no, point. No, I, I suspect a lot of them will be very happy if you go this route because it's going to be like yet another example of journalists really missing the point in a way that's very funny. What is the point? The point is to make Bitcoin the global currency. And people like you being distracted by nonsense can potentially do good on that. That clip... Uh, hit the nail on the head. I, I thought that that was absolutely fantastic. And look, you know what? I, I can't disagree with Peter Todd. I, I do apologize for the quality of it. I, that that was just the quality that was on that was on Twitter uh, when I downloaded it. Um, but you can still make out. Um, you can still make out Adam Back's uh, facial expressions, and uh, not only that, but his mannerisms. So you can see that both between Peter Todd and Adam Back, these guys are laughing their asses off. <laughs> they think this is totally ridiculous. And in all fairness to to Bitcoiners, right? We all, I, I've got to say that Peter Todd hit the nail on the head. Like, yeah, we as soon as as soon as I found out that they said Peter Todd was Satoshi, I was like, all right, I know this is bullshit. I, I know that this is total bullshit. Um, and 
interestingly enough, what was this groundbreaking evidence, right? What was the groundbreaking evidence that HBO used to unmask Satoshi? Are you guys ready for this? Get ready for this. It's huge. What you're looking at is conversation between Satoshi and Peter Todd on BitcoinTalk.org. And the, the, the evidence that breaks this wide open, okay, is that Satoshi, right, the account known as Satoshi Nakamoto, placed the initial comment. And then the supposition is that Peter Todd, being Satoshi, made a mistake, did not realize he was logged in with the wrong account, and responded back to himself as Peter Todd. And the quote-unquote evidence that they are the same person is that Peter uh, supposedly finished Satoshi's thought, right? So it wasn't a response. It was a continuation of thought. And so therefore, Satoshi is Peter. And of course, the next piece of this is that they both disappeared from the Bitcoin, or let me rephrase that, they both stopped posting on the bitcointalk.org forum at the same time. And then Peter Todd reemerged two years later. Um, yeah, I don't, if, if you've ever written on forums, um, if you've ever partaken in long conversations, um, especially if you're working on something similar, uh, the, I, I think that the language style or the, um, we'll say the dialogue style, right? I don't necessarily buy that because of the way that Peter Todd supposedly responded back to himself, that that means that that was himself. I don't, I don't actually think so. I, I think that Peter was probably really good at um, reading and interpreting what Satoshi wrote and therefore responded in kind, right? It, it's almost like he was building upon Satoshi's idea, or he had caught up to what Satoshi was saying and then extrapolated further upon it. That That's not unusual, right? That's not a slam dunk. Finally, to wrap this up, what was the goal of all of this? So this morning, we uh, we held the Good Morning Bitcoin space, and Yellow, right, the, uh, the puppet, Yellow made the assertion, okay, that essentially Peter Todd, because of this, because of this documentary that came out, Peter Todd could be the face of what has been deemed to be the the banker's fork of Bitcoin, right? Because Peter Todd, for the people who, who don't know, uh, Peter Todd champions uh, tail end emissions. He This is no secret, okay? Um, and tail end emissions just simply means uh, to essentially add inflation into Bitcoin, a constant inflation of, I, I think it was approximately 2% inflation per year, okay? Um, so we had some comments this morning and we've got this one person here, Bitcoin Quest said, Todd is going to be the face of the banks to do a fork. And Yellow responded back and said, apparently it's not worth discussing. I don't, I don't agree with that. I totally think it is worth discussing. I do, I, I do actually believe that we, um, we will see a legacy finance fork of Bitcoin. Um, and I'll tell you why I believe this. Um, and it's really not that noble or that sophisticated. Uh, I believe this because we're going to get a fork and we're going to get to dump worthless bags. And um, I'd be a hypocrite if I told you that I wouldn't want money for free from this and then be able to sell the token. Like, why? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to anyone. Yeah, nobody wants that. No, no. If, if you do hold Bitcoin, you don't mind getting forks so that you can dump them. OK, indeed, there are people who will make the argument to say, well, those forks are attacks on Bitcoin. Sure, they are. But you know what? Everything is an attack on Bitcoin. And at the same time, everything is good for Bitcoin. So you know what? I'm not going to sit there and get caught up on one side or the other side. I'm just going to say if we think for a second that legacy banking and all of these power structures are not going to try everything they possibly can, you're just very mistaken. You're very mistaken. And to that point that Peter Todd could be the face of that fork, I wouldn't put it past anybody. Guys, 
Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. I don't know if I'm going to be able to record a clip tomorrow, depending on if we have power, if we have internet, all that good stuff. So otherwise, I will see you guys as soon as I could see you. Take it easy. Thank you.